here we go. Th- th- we're doing this. Number one. Number one. First ever NEC podcast. We got Miguel Jose, Brandon Hall, Thomas Ford on the mic. Let's talk about it, man. Just, I feel like there's so many things going on in skating, and you know, there's a lot of different people talking about different things. But why not put it together and have everybody talk about it together? Yeah, for sure. You know, I think uh, one of the things about skating that there's a lot of misinformation out there, and I, I think it's really important to to kind of talk about some of those things, try to clear up mm-hmm. the air. And and one thing that we should definitely start talking about is these wheels. <laughs> Right, we had Which ones? <laughs> well, the, well, let's start with the Gorilla Grips, yeah. right? We kind of killed that indoor nationals, right? A lot of placements, a lot of a lot of a lot of champions on that wheel, and then all of a sudden after nationals, you couldn't get them. Yeah, that's a sore spot for us, and <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely uh, jump into that. And I, and I don't think it's uh, obviously uh, our wheels haven't been available. I feel like. Uh, every time we see a post on Facebook where people are offering uh, double the price of yeah. retail to buy the dang wheels, uh, it's kind of a little bit of a, a, a sword in, in the side, right? But uh, it's not just our wheels that have been difficult to get. Um, every brand has been a little bit hard, and there's there's some reasons behind that. And Yeah, def- and, uh, it definitely doesn't seem like it's only related to the Gorilla Grip wheels, although the I do got a set, right? Highest bidder, you know, we, <laughs> right? we can get them to them. Uh, <laughs> just email me. <laughs> T4.com. <laughs> no, but uh, but on a more serious note, like you said, I think it's a it's like almost I don't want to call it an epidemic, but it seems that way right now. Yeah. The, right? You, the you crazy know? the craziest part is like this is the only year since I've been skating where I've been to a meet and there's people on used wheels. Like right. majority of people are using used wheels, and that's so you know so foreign to us. It's everyone everyone has fresh sets open on the plastic before the meet, and now it's just like. Anyone got any wheels laying around? I need some better ones. So Right. Whenever you see, like you said, you see fresh wheels out of meat. And then we're seeing meats with no fresh wheels. People got wheels they've been practicing on for months probably. <laughs> right. You know, and they're skating meats like that. So it definitely speaks to the shortage that's out there. Now, I think part of the problem is that there's not that many people that make wheels. Yeah. <laughs> that's That's really... Uh, there's a few things that it's just kind of a perfect storm that happened where this shortage happened. And, and again, like we see every day, people have their theories with it. This is not a scenario where we're trying to control supply and demand. <laughs> we're I, <selling> diamonds. <laughs> I, I promise you that uh, the last thing we want to do is withhold wheels when we could be selling them and making money. That's just, yeah. that's, that, that's just bad business. Right, right? Shoot or skating on them yourself. Yeah. Even. yeah right. <laughs> yeah. That, and that's the other thing, right? Like we skate, so it's not just, uh, uh, like we don't have fresh wheels. Like I'm on trashed wheels. I don't have wheels and I skate and, and uh, I'm bitter about it. Right. So, <laughs> so it's yeah. a big deal, but really here's what it comes down to is that you essentially have um, really three companies that make race product quality wheels, right? Like there's several, I mean, you can go to China, you can get wheels. There's a lot of people who pour wheels, but really when it comes down to it, and you're talking about, you know, that race quality wheel, yeah, there's like really, a- three companies yeah a reputable wheel that you that you know is going to be consistent and that's reliable right? yeah and and out of those three companies the the major player uh that that uh, really kicks butt outdoor well guess what they don't really focus on indoor wheels so now we're down to two companies that make indoor wheels out of those two companies you had one company that went through a major move where they completely rehauled and moved their entire operation to a different state right and so business had to halt and then the second company, which is a smaller, more uh, mom and pa shop uh, t- style company, uh, the manufacturer actually ripped his shoulder and had to do surgery. So he wasn't capable of producing yeah, the physically wheels. Couldn't yeah. Physically couldn't make the wheels. Make the wheels. Right. <clears throat> and so we're coming around the corner and, uh, you know, we don't have any wheels. And uh, f- for us, right, that's a big deal. Like we we really want to build the trust with our customers. I think we have over the years, we've been reliable. There's been a lot of brand loyalty and um, not being able to provide skaters with the most basic thing you need to race. (laughs) um, That hurts for us, right? That's a big deal for us. And and we understand the severity of that because you got to remember we have a sponsor team too, that we're not supplying wheels with these guys are racing on used wheels. And we've gotten to the point like, we don't care what brand you skate on. If you can get yeah, new get wheels, right. you, you can get you a fresh set of wheels. Yeah. You just get you anything, right? right and right. Uh, so, so that's a big deal. And and um, you know, I'm I'm sure that uh, you guys see this box out here that we uh, strategically placed. <laughs> 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 um, but but we're working hard on 
um, the next gen product and at the end of the day it really comes down to us being able to deliver and that that means that we have a superior race wheel that we can consistently provide mm -hmm. and we're very very close to that we're not making any promises yet when we make that promise we will deliver on that promise but we're, we're dang close we really sure, are and I, and I think that's been the mo with nsc right that we're not just kind of push a product that isn't good yeah you know i think at the end of the day um people that are doing indoor racing, which is really, again, a, a small market in, in terms of the grand scheme of things, right? There are more people on earth that skate outside. Oh yeah. Right, than they do inside. And so, again, you have this high demand in a small populace, which does make it a lot tougher. But again, we're not here to put out something that isn't great. Yeah, and so, and I'll let Brandon touch on this a little bit more. So, um, in this whole wheel journey, right? Again, we just kind of explained that there, there really isn't a ton of options. This isn't like fashion where you go, oh man, this guy didn't deliver on my t-shirts. I'm, I'm going to throw a rock and go to the next graphic design mm. guy that does screen printing, right? Uh, this world is very, very difficult because you just don't have a ton of options. And, you know, we were partnered with a with an awesome manufacturer, just have nothing uh, bad to say. Um, obviously, we provided a great, great wheel. Um, the biggest struggle was just that, again, it was a ma and pa shop operation where um, literally every part of the process was done by one or two people, right? It, and and that's great for quality of the wheels. We provided an amazing sure. product, right, to, to, the, to, to the race world. But the problem was is that we couldn't keep up with the demand. So does it really have any relevance how awesome something is if you can't get it? Yeah. Right. Right. And so, <laughs> so what we had to do is go, okay, can, can we take the, cause we, you know, we worked with the same manufacturer for, I don't know, five plus years. And so our thought process is, can we take all these things that we learned with our manufacturer and uh, partner with uh, a bigger manufacturer where we could take all those special uh, intricacies and uh, put them into our new product, but be able to scale it, be able to provide race wheels mm -hmm. to, uh, to the consumers, right? Well, Cause, yeah, because at the <clears throat> end of the day, if, if, if there's no product, then there isn't anybody racing on and, said product. And I think too, like the biggest thing for us, like when we started is always like in our, our industry, it's, it's all service related. So I think, you know, being able to provide that service, provide that promise, you know, you're gonna have, you know, you're gonna have wheels at your competition. You don't have to worry. You can buy them ahead of time. Ahead of time. And not the day of, <laughs> ahead of time. So, I, I mean, I think that's, that's, it's gonna be kind of a game changer for us. You know, we can be able to ship year round, not, you know, have to wait and play catch up. And so. the challenge before this was, is, is there's a trade off, right? Right, because there's just not, everything's not always perfect, right? So the trade off was, can we work with somebody who can scale this operation, but then provide a superior product, right? And um, fortunately, we have this amazing group of people who, I mean, I've literally skated since the, the first inline race, <laughs> right? And I've been fortunate enough to be one of the testers of almost every race uh, wheel product that's come out or amongst the group of people who have been part of those testers, right? Really what he's saying, he's really old. Yeah. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> back in no, my day. Back in yeah. my day, back right? In my when they day. skated uphill both ways. Yeah. yeah. No, but but no, you're you're again, you're right. You've 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 definitely seen uh, every stage of, of this process in terms of making a really quality race wheel. Exactly. And and so what we're, here's where we're at today is that uh, we have partnered with a new manufacturer and we have gone through the first round of test wheels and we feel very optimistic about it. In fact, we, we already feel like we have a superior product to the Gorilla Grip, which is a super <laughs> bold statement, but there's no such thing as every aspect of the wheel is better, okay? So right. like anyone who says that, says that's just crazy, right? Like there's, there's give and take to mm -hmm. all of this. So, <laughs> we think that most of the aspects of the wheel are better. And again, like, you know, Brandon should touch on this more than, than I should. He's, you know, he's young, I'm old. Yeah. Um, he he's a superior. I'm getting he's, there. He's, he's, a, yeah, he's, he's getting there, but he's I'm still a superior way. athlete sure. to me. Right. And, and so at the end of the day, I still want to rely it. He did on, say uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that. It's not true. He'll never I, live that down. Yeah, that was my first proof. lie. I, I told. Proof. <laughs> um, 
but we, you know, we really rely on these athletes that are doing this day in and day out. And the first round of testing was amazing. And, and again, I'll let them touch on this, but there are some micro tuning that I think that we can do the wheel where we don't have to tell you, we think it's better, where we can feel very certain that we can say, this is definitively better than our previous Gorilla Grip product. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed, those adjustments that are in the works right now, we do think that that's gonna be the case, but until we skate them, we can't say for sure. And we wanna go to market with something where we feel really dang good about going, hey guys, here, we, we brought you something new and it's not just this flashy advertising thing. Like you guys can be the judge of it, but we want to make sure that it's yeah, better for your actual off. feedback. Sure. So. And I think what's really neat about it is and again, I'll, I'll let Brandon touch more about his um, experiences with the testing is like, we've all skated this wheel. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it was funny to me cause you guys were probably two weeks ahead of me in terms of trying this wheel. And I, and I tried not to hear any feedback from you. And then yeah. the feedback I gave to you was like the same things mm -hmm. you guys were saying, which I thought was really cool, right? Because it's kind of like... And that's that's the way that, to do it. Yeah, too. Blind testing, I don't want right? to you know, tell the kids on my team like, hey, this wheel's amazing. <laughs> Go try it and take my word for it. Like I always just, just tell me, just tell me your thoughts and then I'll tell you my thoughts after you tell me. And, and we do that all the time. Yeah. Like every wheel that we've tested and usually we're, we're pretty close because I think we skate a little similar. Um, but trying the new wheels, like the biggest thing for me is I remember transitioning to the Gorilla Grips when we first got them and I couldn't skate them. Like the way that I skate, like I entered the corner too early and I would just bark every corner. And then this guy yelled at me, like probably every <laughs> practice, like stop barking, you know, trust the wheels and then try to round the corner a little bit more. And once I did that, I started getting used to it and I wouldn't just go into the corner and slam. I'm sure. But again, I think that's like. I think that was holding me back. And I really think that's what has hold, been holding back the times too. Cause back when we were at Pattison's, we had, you know, a wheel that we could actually slam, feel comfortable, go, you know, balls to the wall, you know, as fast as we could, especially in the hundred meter. Um, so I think this new wheel, I'm back at that stage, but I also have some of the properties from the Gorilla Grips, which I really liked. Sure. Uh, that was the, that was the challenge, right? And so, you know, um, the fastest hundred meter time doesn't mean that you're going to do the best in a thousand meter, right? Sure. And a lot of times we gauge the speed with the, with the best wheel and we have based kinda, off lap time, based mm -hmm. off of, based off of indi individual, individual lap, lap, yeah. lap times, right? The fastest lap, the day, fastest right. lap time. And so this challenge of thinking was, um, you know, traditionally there's what we categorize as indoor wheels and what we categorize as outdoor wheels. And all that means is that's the manufacturing process in which they choose to do the wheels. There's not actually like a box that comes in a chemicals and is like indoor wheels, outdoor <laughs> wheels, right? This was guess and check, guess and check, guess and check. And since 1992, when, when we started racing on inlines, um, each shoot even quad wheels, right? Because a lot of these properties came over from quad days. They said, these wheels traditionally work better outdoors and these wheels traditionally work better indoors. The thing is, is that the traditional outdoor wheels skate really comfortable. They're really easy to skate on. The problem was, is that when you got to high speeds, the wheels would heat up and yep. you couldn't go fast. So right. like if you were just doing cruise laps, gosh, out the wheels great. Yeah. Yeah. amazing, right? Or or G13s, get a, baby. one corner. Listen, you get yeah. on some You're G13s like, right you. now <laughs> and, and you'll feel real comfortable. Real comfortable. Until lap at those three. pace <laughs> speeds, right? Exactly. <laughs> and so with the Gorilla Grip wheel, we really went the opposite direction because when we originally rolled the Alpha wheel, we thought we had something really dang close to the competing brand. And in fact, um, it was pretty debatable whether it was better or not, but it wasn't definitive. And so of course, like any athlete, like why would you gamble? Like if you can't feel a definitive difference, why would you go away from the brand that you're used to? Sure. So our only choice really to break into the market was to go radically different. And we stumbled upon, uh, you know, through the manufacturer who had all these amazing ideas, we stumbled upon the Gorilla Grip wheels, right? Like really at the end of the day, like we can't really take credit for anything more than giving great feedback. Mm -hmm. Like none sure. of us can go in yeah. a lab and create a wheel, yeah. <laughs> right. but the guys that create the wheels also can't skate. So you have to have that relationship where you can't get there. Right. Right. And so we went the opposite direction. We said, what if we can work on that outdoor wheel feeling, but figure out a way for it not to heat up. Mm -hmm. Right. 
And that was the Gorilla Grip. But there was some issues with it. And that issue really was that you couldn't slam the wheel. However, if you adjusted the way that you skated, it was a superior wheel in my opinion. Yeah. Like at the end of a 15 lap race, you had legs left because it was so dang easy to skate. Um, and so <laughs> now we're in a position where we go, what if we can slam that wheel, right? Like that was the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And I really think right now that we got there. Now, again, there are some components of it where our first initial round of test wheels is uh, inferior to some aspects of the Gorilla Grip wheel, but as an overall wheel, I think we have a superior wheel. But after we do this micro tuning, again, fingers crossed, I think we're gonna be able to come out and definitively tell people like we made a better product. Yeah, sure. Now, I mean, for, for maybe those that are watching the podcast that aren't as uh, technically sound, maybe they're new to the sport. I mean, how, how much of this is just, you got to try it. Well, <laughs> you should never take any of our words for any of it. Uh, <laughs> that, listen, <laughs> I remember when, um, MPCs came out with their, uh, indoor wheel and I skated the indoor wheel. And as soon as you went uh, below nine second laps, you couldn't skate the wheel. And so in my brain, I said, the wheel's garbage. Yeah. And then I started watching kids and I'm like, man, those kids looked significantly faster. So I said, am I, am I looking at this the wrong way? Am I thinking that like a kid skates like a pro? Cause they don't. Right. But in my brain, I go, they didn't work for me. So they can't work for anybody. Mm -hmm. So we started blind uh, timing kids and they were going insanely fast on those MPC wheels, but no one was buying them because the pros couldn't skate on them. So at the end of the day, like every skater has to do what's right for them and what and the they're comfortable and with. what they're comfortable yeah. with. And the only way to find that out is to try the product. But what our goal is, is to kind of try to do some of that legwork ahead of time for you. Put them on that eight year old who's really fast, right. put them on that, mm -hmm. you know, 45 year old, uh, you know, man or woman who's fast, put it on the pro and see if we can get a wheel that works good for, for most everybody. People. Yeah. The most people, right? Cause like you said, at the end of the day, there's not going to be one specific wheel that just works for every single person. Yeah. You know, there's always going to be that subjectivity and, and, and that's fair. Yeah. Right. I think, but, uh, what, what you're saying is, is really encouraging, right? You want to try to take some of that subjectivity out, try to get these wheels on a larger population and go, Hey, what are the minor details that we can change that cover the most bases? Exactly. Right? What's going to work for the most amount of people. And, he, and here's what was so fun um, about testing these wheels. So again, Brandon and I skate kind of similar. We've skated together for so many dang years. It just happens naturally. But um, one of the things that we do when we test wheels is that we won't tell each other our thoughts about the wheel until both of us have skated it. And then we won't just come out and say it. We're like, we'll write it down. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. write it down and then we'll trade info. Yeah. And it's hilarious because we're like, this is kind of creepy how similar our feedback is. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for commonalities, right? Like, because at the end of the day, like a lot of top athletes, that doesn't mean they can test product, right? Like mm -hmm. they're really good at something, but we're looking for commonalities, right? And so, so far, uh, Brandon has skated the wheel. I've skated the wheel. Of course, you have skated the wheel. Uh, Gabe Lyons has skated the wheel. Adrian Workman skated the wheel. Uh, Francesca, uh, Francesca skated, skated the, the wheel. Junior junior uh caleb wakefield so we have this really top group of uh you know pro athletes that we we trust uh their feedback and the commonalities are the same right because we're throwing away the things that are one-offs right when we're looking like what's the common info and every single one of them is like you can slam this wheel right mm-hmm Right. Don't ever ask an athlete about the wheels after they lost a race. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Because we, we, that wheel's terrible. The, cra right? the crazy part is just how many times like you've been at a meet or like there's a sponsored athlete there and you ask him like their honest feedback on a wheel and you're like, that doesn't seem right. Like I've skated that wheel. So I think it's good. Like if a wheel sucks, like if Miguel came out of the wheels, like try these, like this is going to be a wheel and they sucked. I would tell this guy like, I'm not skating on these dudes. Like, right. They're <laughs> trash. Like I would rather buy... <laughs> a brand new set of another manufacturer if they're better like I'm, i want to go fast like i don't and and keep in mind that while we were working on test wheels so rewind right because alpha was the first wheels we brought to to market we had test wheels 
for three to four years prior to putting our name on a product. And guess what? While we were doing those test wheels, he kept saying the wheel sucked and I didn't even race the wheels we were trying to eventually make because <laughs> I like to win. <laughs> so at the end of the day, yeah, winning's way cooler. Losing. Right, exactly. So at the end of the day, I was skating a brand that was not in my best interest to skate <laughs> because I like to get first place. <laughs> yeah, sure. And so uh, for us to actually put our name on something, that's a that's a big deal. That means that not only did I stamp it. Um, oh, it's, our, it's our went through multiple it. levels, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I mean, everywhere. <laughs> I mean, I think that's the thing too that, uh, like you were kind of saying with with the consumer, right? You you want some some brand familiarity, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that uh, folks that have purchased these products in the past can know, right? There's like, if it if it's out there, there's a seal of approval. There's a certain standard yeah. that it must meet, or it's not going to be put out there, right? And I think that's. That, that hopefully for the consumer makes them feel a little bit better, right? When when we're putting out a product, it's it's gonna be something that's been tested and tried and you know basically went through the ringer with as many naysayers as possible. Yeah. Right, we wanna try to get as many opinions as you can and again, find those commonalities because you know, when a, when a lot of people think something's good, that's probably a good indicator that it's good. Yeah, and, and you know, for the consumers listening, like we can't apologize enough like we get it we're in the same boat like we want to skate on we want to skate on new wheels we want to we want to make sure we have wheels to race and so like that that's a big deal from us and and you know we're quite frankly we're kind of embarrassed about that we're even in the situation because the last thing we want to do was you know we work so dang hard to get ourselves in a position to to have the number one wheel in my opinion the gorilla grip was the number one For wheel sure. like it was sweeping divisions. The best skaters were on them. The, even the younger skaters, like mm -hmm. it was, in my opinion, definitively the, the best wheel. And so never in a million years did we think we'd be in a situation where we had the best wheel, but couldn't provide it to a consumer. And so right. that, that's tough for us. That, that, that really hurts. Um, and you know, and so we can't, we can't say sorry, you know, enough times that's, that's a big deal. And so as we're, you know, venturing into this, this new wheel where we think that we actually can deliver a consistent product and, and, and have the inventory needed to really supply, uh, the skating community. Um, we could have came out with the wheel and made the January meets, but again, back to this, we wanted to have a hundred percent definitiveness that we could go. This is a better product right now. The wheel that we're testing, we do feel is superior, but like it's still debatable. Well, there's just slight things that we could fix to make it just like, I've never felt this before. You know what, yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like Something that- A little and bit. That, and I think that's what you're always looking yeah. for when when you're releasing new products, right? You want to have a feeling that you never felt Yeah, before. push the bar that yeah, you've never gone bar. before. Right. Yeah, and, and we understand these time frames because it's scary because in January, you got a lot of major meets and uh, we'll see what happens. I don't know if people are going to be able to get wheels in That's January. Crazy. And and we that really was our goal. We wanted to, to get it out by January. But more importantly for us is long term, right? Like that we can stand behind the product. So like this was a hard judgment call for us because we could have released the the first test round of wheels. That, and again, it's a race wheel. Like people would be stoked about it. But we can make it better. And so for us, this was a round table discussion. Obviously you guys were part yeah. of that discussion. Um, and so at the end of the day, like we might miss that January round. And then, you know, the next big wave really of, of meets is, is end of February, March. Um, and so, you know, in a perfect world. Yeah. I mean, yeah. When that's what everybody's asking now, right? We've been talking about these wheels for right. 25 minutes. When, when, when is the anticipated release? Yeah, and, and, and I don't want to make a promise that we can't deliver on, exactly. but everybody on the team, everybody who's involved in the project is aware that the the big goal is, can we make it by uh, this upcoming NSC, which is uh, February 8th, right? And we have a, a, a big invitational that weekend, so technically February 8th and 9th, um, and, and everybody is completely tuned into that goal, but we're not going to release something until it's ready. So that's why we can't make that product. Like if we go through this next test round and it's definitively mm -hmm. ready, we're going to go into production and we're going to make these wheels. Um, the packaging's done for it. Uh, you guys are going to be so stoked on, on some of the things that we did for the wheels. Um, you guys are used to opening up a cheap 
uh, thing of plastic. It's the most expensive product <laughs> on the dang market because you got to buy five, six sets of them a year. Yeah. And you don't even get packaging with the product. We're not going to raise the price of the wheel. We're going to we're going to take that hit on our end of the profits. We're going to give you great packaging. And then here's the coolest part. <laughs> we're going to put a golden ticket in every 10 to 15 sets of wheels. We haven't made that definitive decision on how many sets. And that golden ticket is a free set of wheels. So you're going to open up this package. We're going full on Willy Wonka style. <laughs> and uh, and we're going to let people win some some free wheels. And uh, so we're, we're stoked about this. You know, at the end of the day, this is our passion. This is what we do. Um, you know, Thomas, you're a football coach. We've never <laughs> taken a penny from NSC. I do mortgages. Brandon does mortgages. You know, uh, Ron, who's behind the camera, he doesn't take a penny from the business. We have a whole crew. Kelly Springer doesn't take a penny from the business. We have a whole crew that we just love this. Sure. And none of us take any money from the business. Every dollar that comes into NSC, it goes back into the community. Every single dollar. We've been going since 2009, believe it or not. This is crazy how long we've been going. And not one employee has ever taken a penny from the business. That's nuts. Well, speaking of the business, man, you kind of alluded to it. NSC 33 is coming up. Yeah. Right? And 33, I think it, man. Man, if you, if you start, ca crazy. start counting the numbers, man, <laughs> yeah. like you said, over the past 10 plus years now, you know, there's been NSC. And I think one thing that's been really neat is you really have an entire generation now of skaters that are actually in the NSC that have never skated without an NSC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that is... <coughs> absolutely nuts for me one because it, it lets me know how old i am <laughs> <laughs> we, well, um, we, yeah, are. we <laughs> are um but two like it, it's weird because these are things that like i don't know a time the nba didn't exist i don't know a time the nfl didn't exist and it's so cool to me that when i hear some of these younger skaters and they're like yeah my goal is to be in the nsc it's crazy i remember when you know, we were first getting going and it was really trying to like get the athletes buy-in. And luckily, like the first group of athletes were my friends. I had to put a back seat to my dreams, which was like the NSC was just personal preference stuff. I'm like, you know, it'd be really cool as if we marketed the hell out of this, yeah. did some packaging, did some lights and made speed skating look cool. Oh, damn, I got to run it so I don't get to race. <laughs> <laughs> now you can. Now I think you could do it. Oh, uh, I'm not doing it. Now I'm too old. <laughs> well, now, now, just yeah, now, he's, now he's not going to win. No, dude, go out yeah. the thousand and just do your thing. <laughs> That's right, man. You got the thousand for sure. Well, I mean, that that is coming up, like you said, yeah. February 8th and 9th. Now, obviously, with, with the league being 10 plus years old, you know, we're getting close to seeing full generations finish. Yeah. One guy that I know that's going to be racing in NSC 33, uh, Justin Stelly. <laughs> oh, Stelly's racing? I didn't even know yeah, Stelly was yeah. racing. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, we, we NSC touched NSC 1 to NSC 33. That's what I'm saying, dude. man. You know, w when you start seeing <laughs> guys like that, and, and Justin said, you know, this probably the last one, right? When, yeah. when you start seeing that, like a, a full generation has happened, you know, him being one of the kind of pioneers of the league, and then now his time is over, right? You, We've seen this already with some of our other athletes, Jeremy Anderson, Michael Cheek, right? Like well, some, well, some of the greatest, right? We'll and see, though. That dude loves skating. Like these guys. Cheeks, I know, man. He, they, all these guys love skating. They, like, they do. I can't tell you how many times I've heard like. Well, I've heard. Me Steve, going listen. See, like, it's my last one. It's my last oh, one. Oh, Stephen Carter's told me it's his last one. Yeah, exactly. 15 times. <laughs> yeah. And, guys, and, and Carter will be here for 30 years. You guys want to well, so. hear a fun story? Oh, God. So uh, we didn't know. You know, we didn't know how to start NSC. We had this this big vision, right? Like, okay, we're going to be in arenas, which amazingly we, we have been now, right? Like, <laughs> we didn't know though, right? Like, very beginning, we had no money. We, <laughs> we, had, we had no know-how. We didn't even know what the business was. All we knew was that we could do skating better. That's all we knew, right? This, it's just not, it's not being presented the way that it should be presented. And so we didn't have a trial format when we started. It was literally me going around going, you guys, I got this really cool concept and I really need you to be a part of it. Like this is your contribution to skating. And Carter was the very, very first person I asked. And nice. he was like, I was actually gonna quit. 
<laughs> and, uh, yeah, right. All right, I got you for this one event. <laughs> <laughs> I got you That's for this awesome, one dude. event. 33, or 32 awesome. events later. Dude, keep in mind that the very first event Carter skated, he was already out of his prime. Sure. And to watch him skate now at the age that he's at and still have the athleticism that he does, his athleticism is like just like I sit there in awe like you watch his videos and you're like this dude corner pass four <laughs> times in a 300, in a 300 meter. meter yeah exactly oh, I love it. no that I, I remember seeing that video out on Instagram and thinking that how is that <laughs> that's not even possible right like to to do that but, but how how amazing is that right and so you got guys like that and, and it really shows um the testament to like how good these athletes were but at the same time I would love to challenge people's thinking because we do this thing in athletics in general where we uh, get so fixated on nostalgia, right? Like, sure, a, spe like a specific time yeah. period. It's a specific time period. And if that was the time period you came up through the sport, whoever your idols were in the sport, they're gods to you. And no one could ever be better, <laughs> right? Like, sure. You, you know, you, this is that's what's so fun about the Michael Jordan and uh, LeBron debate, right? Like, if, if you grew up in the Jordan era, no one can ever ever be better and he's not impossible right and and, and <laughs> no one ever forever and, yeah and for our age and not even you like because you're younger but for me and thomas there's this big debate between chad and joey right right and, and if you grew up in chad's era like there's no no one way. can be better that's why i'm on i'm on the joey side because you guys like i your guys era always here you know the chad 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 but i saw joey i'm just like that dude's nasty. <laughs> yeah. Who's nasty. gonna beat that guy? Yeah, right, yeah. right. And, and that's the that's the challenging thought because as we've circulated NSC athletes, people are just like, "Oh, you guys don't have you don't have the group," and you're like, "What do you mean we don't have the group?" Like Adrian Workman. This is the group. This is the group. <laughs> Adrian Workman won the first Grand Champion race of the first NSC event he ever did at 15 years old, and every good person was in that dang race. You were in the race. Yeah. Michael Cheek was in the race. Justin Stelly was in the race. Like you had legends in the race, and this 15-year-old kid came in and won the race. Zach Stoppelmore was in the race. Right. Now Zach Stoppelmore was coming up at that time yeah. too, but he's older than Adrian. Current and grand so champ. We get so caught up in this nostalgia thing that we don't really acknowledge the now, right? Because the group that's watching them, that's that's going to yeah. be the thing. Well, but I mean, the old heads aren't. Well, like you're <laughs> saying, I mean, you just talked about Zach Stoppelmore. Mm -hmm. I mean. The last time I watched NSC, I, I who can beat that guy? Shh. Right? He I was mean, good. I mean, he comes out in the 800 meter, pounds From 800. Start. He pounds yeah. eight laps in a row. Never, never turns down the burners for one minute. At, at, at one point, you're like, oh, someone? Nope, nope. no one's gonna pass him ever. Yeah. Right. And so why why isn't Zach Stopmore? Right. Like you're saying, maybe there's there's a kid right now watching Zach that thinks no, there's no possible way anybody can beat him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And, and at, he just has to do it enough times. Sure. You know, and that and that's what that's uh, and and I think they will. You're gonna see some of these guys do it enough times. Like that's, like again, Michael Cheek, right? Like to me, he he's a legend. Like that that guy didn't get, he never got the opportunity uh, in the format that he was racing in to really show how good he was, right? Like it, like prior to NSC, there wasn't a format to really figure out who the best skater was. It was all tailored towards sprinters. Sure. So, uh, like for pro at internationals, for example, there was so much weight on a standing hundred. Okay, well, Cheeks would win all the other races. Yeah. But he'd get killed in the standing hundred. With NSC, it's pretty dang fair. You get sprinters and you get endurance guys, and then they have to race the middle distance. Whoever's the best at the middle distance, in my opinion, after qualifying through their rounds and wins that is the best period. And Cheeks didn't really get the luxury of of uh, getting that 10 year spread when he was really just killing people because the NSC didn't exist. And at the tail end of his career, he really stamped his legacy. But imagine if NSC existed 10 years before that, like what we would think about a guy like him. Sure, because then, then he might've been skating for 20 years in, yeah. in the NSC, right? And you know, hopefully <clears> with some of these guys that uh, again, ha have actually done that, right? Like we just talked about with Justin Stelly, right? He's gonna now have skated for over 10 years in the NSC and obviously those accolades continue to add up for guys like that which brings me to my next point when is there going to be a hall of fame for the NSC I think I feel like the NSC after the 10 year mark it's with time. with 33 events it, there's some there's some guys <clears throat> and some gals in there that could definitely be first ballot type hall of fame people 
Absolutely. And, 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 uh, I, I really think that that comes down to, to your call, Thomas, at the end well, of the day. Well, it's got to be my like, call. Yeah, dude, this, has, is, yeah. this is, this That's, is your call the with, thing. with your athletic maybe we, background. Maybe, and, maybe we leave it up to the fans and we see who, he, who who's even in, in the mix for the and first build the ballot. the criteria. Yeah. Right? That would I think, be cool. I think that there, there's definitely a lot of guys that uh, stand out in my mind that would be in that conversation. Well, yeah. do, you, do you, I mean, for that, like, would you go off of – times or would you go off of why well, in my mind like, right that's I, so tough like, well no yeah, yeah and that's why that's why you have or... this conversation i think in my mind if you look at typical sports criteria they look at wins right? yeah who, who was winning how how many wins you know you, you take that into account by how many seasons they were in and but it can't just be that like no yeah because, and, 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 because, and i think yeah. there's a lot of things too yeah. right how many grand champions race you have because there's you know, for example, there's really good skaters that could be in that conversation. Mm-hmm. I've never won a grand championship. Their ability to race. Right. Right. Like there's, there's, there's a lot of, there's a criteria to, to definitely be built on, but I think that conversation is worth having. Absolutely. And, and so, um, you know, I kind of lost train of thought here, but going back to the nostalgia thing, I really wanted to bring up the women and, that, and that's really where I was going with it is that, um, we had this group of women that raced the last race. And, and again, like, <clears throat> I was around for the very, very first competition with inline skates came out. In fact, they used to mix inline skates with quads because <laughs> people struggle with change so much. Oh, so bad. That they said, nah, man, them inline things ain't going to work. There's no way. <laughs> but again, we go back to this nostalgia, and you had this amazing era with um, – Teresa Cliff, uh, Julie Brandt, Julie Cheryl Glass Lizelle. now, Cheryl Lizelle, and that list goes on. And there's been this big separation from that era for so long where, where this group of women were just so amazing. And the last NSC, I, I would really challenge uh, people to think um, and, and, and create this debate between you had four girls and I watched these four women <clears throat> race at such a high level that I, like I literally was just in awe of it. You had Aaron Jackson, uh, Francesca, uh, Corey, and uh, and uh, Kelsey, Kelsey yeah. and holy smokes, and 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 then there were girls even in the mix that really that could compete with those girls, but weren't mixing it up as much, you mm-hmm. know, like your Jessica Brooks. But really, those four girls, when I was watching the strategy, the way that they were racing. Every single girl was playing off of each move that they were doing. Every single girl was uh, aggressive. To me, that the last grand champion race from the women was the best indoor racing, man or woman racing, that I've seen since I can remember. It was incredible. Well, it's, it's, it's <clears throat> funny about that particular race. Like, the, the racing was so good, you almost forgot who won. Yeah. You know? I didn't forget. Well, of course you, <laughs> didn't you got you got to hear about it the whole yeah. trip home. Oh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> certainly uh, a, a race to be remembered and, and and a group of ladies to be remembered. Yeah, he didn't it? forget because Sugar Mama bought him some stuff. Oh, yeah. that <laughs> prize money. That's <laughs> absolutely yeah, yeah. absolutely. Spok- that. Spokane got lit up that night. Oh yeah, hit uh, the mall. That, there's no <laughs> doubt without without a doubt. But but again, like you said, that that group of ladies was certainly impressive and. Um, with with the way that their careers are all going and in and, and different tracks that they're taking at this point, you might not see that again. And, and that's what, you know, and I hate to bring up this topic, but I'm going to do it, whatever. We're being real and we're talking on the podcast, whatever, dude, here we go. Here it goes. <laughs> but I hate to bring up the, the, this topic. My, my biggest fear is um, this thought process with um, chasing ice skating as if it's the only avenue th- through sport. Um, and I obviously have a totally different perspective on this, right? I, uh, I own a pro league for inline skating. So my opinion's completely biased, but my opinion was biased way before it. Cause I was an ice skater. I, I had numerous national records on, on ice skating. I've, I've, uh, you know, been a national champion on, on ice. I hated it. I tried it one time with you and it was awful. It's cold, it's cold, dude. Like you wake up at five a.m., you get in the ice rink, you're just sitting there shivering. But, like, but, what, what, but, 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 but why, I mean, let me let me ask you. Let me ask the question. I, I guess I would ask you guys this: Why is there the misconception that in in, in order to reach the pinnacle of mm-hmm. speed skating, you have to transition to ice? Is it is it because mm-hmm. it is on TV every four years, and only if you're the best of the best? You're even on TV. Is that is that attraction of grandeur? Is that 
what is driving this mentality of, well, if I want to be successful, I have to go to ice. I think it comes, I think it comes down to not being able to see the underbelly of sports, right? And, and, um, to me, every single person who's ever inline skated, uh, got into it simply because they were like, dude, this is fun. This is fun, right? Like no one got into it because they were like, I want to, I want to be in the Olympics. Um, and in fact, man, whatever, I'm just going to say, it. nobody even gets into ice skating. There's five times less participants in inline skating. And the way that they survive is that when inline skaters who found this passion for racing inlines uh, reach kind of the pinnacle of the sport, there just seems to be this storyboard that's laid out that the natural progression is, is ice. And I really want to challenge that idea because I don't believe that to be true. I don't think that there's a significant financial reward at the end of it. I don't even think that there's more of a mainstream popularity award at it unless you are as lucky as some, and I shouldn't say lucky because Apollo was amazing, right? But uh, timing worked out great, right? Like if the games are in China and you win an Olympic gold, ain't nobody watching you. You know, you got to remember that when Apollo won, games were in the United States and in Vancouver. Mm, right. Same time zones, right? We had the story behind it. Also during that same time period, um, Apollo was favored to win a lot of medals. He's marketable as all hell. And the media was able to get behind him, right? But are we forgetting all of the other athletes that were successful that got no notoriety? Sure. Olympic gold medalists sure. who got no notoriety? Well, I, I think like, you know, you've gotten the question, you've gotten the question, you know, you, you go to school when you're a kid, you're skating, you're like, you're going to be in the Olympics. You're going to be in the Olympics or you, you skate like Apollo Ono on ice. And I think that's like, it's just drilled into our heads until we get to the point where like, you know, I've been to Worlds and I, I feel like this is it, I've been to NSC. And then, you know, you're like, but what if, you know, I, I chased that Olympic dream? Because when I was a kid, like, that's something I wanted to do because Apollo was on TV, he's from our area. And, you know, my friends kept asking about the Olympic question. I think that's what's driving kids. I mean, there's other layers on top of it, recruitment, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that's, we're kind of, there's this perception that that's, that's the, the top of that the is sport. that is the top spot yeah <clears throat> and right? let's be really clear that you said the word perception right because it's not simple like the olympics is pinnacle of sport that's not true right well certainly not true yeah. when you look at the realities right the the best basketball players in the world play in the nba correct right that mm -hmm. that that is where the best play yep. now olympic basketball is very popular and it's a very high level but let's just be honest. What are people watching on ESPN? They're, they're yeah. looking for NBA highlights. Yeah. yeah. Right? And, and it's, here's a better example that's more similar to our sport. Um, what, uh, what year was the last summer games? We're in 20 now. So it's 18. No, 16, right? Because don't, don't we have – when are the next games? 22? Yeah, so 2016 was the last games, right? No, I think it was eight. Eh, I don't remember. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Well, it had to be. Here, here's the question. <laughs> this is how awesome this is, right? We don't right. even know when the last games was. Uh, who won uh, an Olympic gold for cycling? Yeah, nobody knows. I'm not sure. Do you even could... know a single cyclist who won an Olympic no. gold medal? Can you name one? No, of course not. Can you name not. one? Don't you cycle? Not. I mean, sort You've been of. known not, to dabble a little that, bit, yeah, right? Yeah, dabble. <laughs> how, many, how many miles have you cycled? Uh, dude, I have no idea. Just guess. Like in my life? Yeah. I'm probably Thousands, far. right? Yeah, few thousand yeah. okay so you cycled a few thousand miles and you don't even know who an olympic gold medalist is in cycling no. uh do you know an american from uh texas who won the tour de france yes what's his name <laughs> so reason i almost said michael Phelps. <laughs> 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 oh, dude, what is it? Th this is my lance point Armstrong, this baby. is my baby. point yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody know lance. first thing that came in my mind Everybody know lance yeah, man yeah. but this is my point it's perception based so the entire world perceives the Tour de France as the pinnacle of sport. Why? Prize money and notoriety, right? And and it's on TV for what? Notoriety. Two, three weeks notoriety. Right? That's the notoriety. And, 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 and yeah. if you go back, if you go backwards on that same question, right? Like, did Lance Armstrong win an Olympic medal at any point in his Who career? Knows? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I have no idea. He might have. Yeah. He probably. He, he could have won ten. He probably. And has. I would not know. Mm -hmm. Right. But Bob? I know for sure he won Tour de France. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know that with 100% certainty. 
Yeah, boxing is a good example too, right? Because I don't know if Floyd's ever won an Olympic medal, but I, I think he has. I think he has actually. He's yeah. one of the guys. Have you seen that, it? <laughs> well, I didn't watch it. No. I mean, I tell you that but right it, now because yeah. that was a time when he was probably like sixteen. So, so <laughs> I think he was. Yeah, he might he have been young. sixteen or seventeen years old. So to me, really, when we're talking about sport, it comes down to athlete buy-in, right? And right now, we have this environment. Getting back to this ice skating thing, where we have this uh, perception where all these young kids have bought into this idea that ice skating somehow is uh, more prestigious than inline skating. And I always challenge people to this, okay? So, uh, you know, Joey, everybody knows Joe. Joe Joe helped found uh, the, the NSC. He has this enormous following. Guess where the following's from? Oh, it's from inline. Inlines. Inline. Oh, yeah. This guy skated two games, and this yep. guy's an enormous following inline. Like I'm talking about people, like I've seen pictures of this guy when he was in Columbia, and kids are pulling on his shirt like he's in sync or something. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> he kind of was at that time, right? <laughs> yeah, that's not pretty much. That's not happening in ice skating, and he's a damn good ice skater, right? Like he really is. Like yeah, I, I just I, won I, a math start. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a world champion. World he's a champion. world champion <laughs> ice skater, yeah. and. You know, again, and I talked to Joe about this, and I don't want to ever say anything bad about anybody. Joe, Joe did this, in my opinion, for the right reasons, which I always talk about is like, why do you want to do this? He's like, this really was self-fulfillment for me. Like, I really feel like in order for me to feel good about my athletic career, I needed to do this. A lot of people don't have that same answer. Well, I, well and, and also, too, when we're talking about the specific example, we're talking about someone that literally did all you could do. Yeah, 28 yeah. time world champion. Right. I mean, how, how many more world championships can you really have before you've, you know, maximized your time. Right. And I, and I don't know that I, we haven't had another skater like that. Yeah. My biggest fear for a lot of these athletes that, that are right at the verge of their pinnacle of their career, where they're about to, to get an opportunity maybe to be a world champion. Cause we're losing too many that haven't even become a world champion mm-hmm. yet is that they jump over to this ice world. Keep in mind that if, if, if you don't make the cut, you get a cut every four years, you're out. <laughs> yeah, you're on the outside looking in. Nobody knows who you Forever. are. Mm-hmm. No one knows <laughs> your name. No one knows anything that you did. You switch to a sport that you don't even like more than our sport. Let's face it, dude. Like the stupidest things with ice skating, like, right? Like I laugh, like, God. right? Like I, I, laugh, <laughs> I laugh at the dumbest things. I'm like, are we really sitting in this cold rink where I got to put my ice blades on and I got to duck walk to the bathroom? <laughs> like we skate in the summertime on inlines and we're like, dude, like it's a, like gorgeous backdrops. Like we're in Tacoma, right? We got the water next to us. <laughs> this dude's in Florida and we're having fun. Sure. Go ask ice skaters. Like, are you having fun? Most of them aren't having fun. Which is a very it, strange it's thing. Hard, it's just hard going from like how aggressive our sport is. Like, throwing hips and corners, you know, putting all your power down on the start, then going your long track, you're racing the clock, to, right? You're racing the clock yeah. or you're in a pack and short track and you don't even get it like, I don't know, maybe some people do like it more, but from my, like I've tried it and it's just, dude, inlines is. And well, the, and the objective here isn't to, and the objective here isn't to, yeah. say, it isn't to go to one versus the other. The objective here is to make people who love our sport I want to challenge their thinking of them going, I'm going to quit the thing I love doing <laughs> to chase the thing that people told me I'm supposed to do without even thinking about it, right? Like, like NSC doesn't exist if I chased ice skating. I was a good damn ice skater. Sure. I was like, this, this is cold. Mom, dad, this sucks. <laughs> I don't want to do it. And I remember thinking like, man, like this inline thing is amazing. Like, like the environment's amazing. The, the, the community mm-hmm. is amazing. Uh, every aspect of it, I, I just I think is superior to ice in every single way, with the exception that we don't get a shot at the games. And so uh, now let me okay, let me reframe this. Now, if if our sport had a shot in say the summer games, right? Do we even have people transition? Do would we ever have anybody transition into ice? Not one. I don't think we Probably would either. I mean, I, I think the the probability would be so low that. You know, I, you know, conspiracy theory starts popping in. Maybe, maybe ice never wants that, right? Because then now they don't have a, a pool of athletes to choose from anymore. Because realistically, who, who, who is percentage wise, if you're talking about we, we've got X amount of skaters, just speed skaters mm. as a whole t- genre, like whole group, 
Let's right? call them speed skaters. Just call them yeah. speed skaters, call them an entire group, skaters. right? How many of those speed skaters are first trying speed skating on ice? A very, very small very, amount. Very, very small amount. But the, but the challenge is this, right? Like, because that, you know, ice skating has no influence whether or not we, we go to the games. The, the challenge is this, is that inline skating is a summer game sport, right? So there's approximately 10 to 12,000 summer Olympians. And uh, ice skating is a winter game sports. And there's only not about 4,000 not, not uh, winter Olympians. And then also we're competing against more established sports. Like, like literally, you know, uh, every games we bid, we, we lost to golf and, and rugby. Of course. And yeah. then we lost to skateboarding. Of course we lost to skateboarding. You know why? Because skateboarding there's a lot of people brought skateboarding. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, here's, but here's why. Skateboarding got to the point where they didn't need the Olympics. And then the Olympics did them. Does golf need the Olympics? Uh, no. 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 Right? So, so, so if we ever even have a chance at the games, you know, whether that's me and you guys as a promoter of NSC get us to the point where that notoriety is to the point where we don't need the games, that'll be the first opportunity we get, or it's somebody else. But we're not going to get the notoriety through the games because we're never going to get our shot until we're a big enough business where the Olympic Games – can uh, actually benefit from us. Mm -hmm. It's not charity, right? This is business, guys. Like, here's the thing. Like, you guys realize that if you're an Olympian, you essentially have no opportunity as an Olympian to make any money from endorsements mm -hmm. during the blackout dates. Like, if you wanted to go sign a deal with Nike, they're like, too bad. Uh, those companies sponsor the teams, and then those teams decide how much money they're going to provide to the athletes. Like, a while back, uh, 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 Lolo uh, Jones got criticized heavily because she joined the bobsled team, and she showed a check. And and you know, don't go Google this and beat me up on this because I might be wrong. But it was like three hundred dollars or something, and she was just trying to prove a point. Like I'm with people equivalent to me, athletic ability wise. She was probably a millionaire at the time from track, mm -hmm. but she's like, these guys are the same as me and we're getting a $300 stipend a month and they're starving. Right. She got, of course, got criticized for yeah. it, but I understood her point. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is the underbelly that we don't talk about. Like you're going to be a 17 year old kid and you're going to go, eh, I'm going to put my education on hold or maybe I'm going to put being an entrepreneur on hold or I'm going to do whatever and I'm going to go chase this Olympic thing. And the Olympic thing probably won't pan out and it's okay if it doesn't pan out if you did it for the right reasons because life's about experience and if you enjoyed your experience no amount of money could ever exchange yeah. experience sure but if you're chasing this thing because you want some feather in your cap to tell people you're an olympian nobody cares i promise you <laughs> nobody cares it's true mm -hmm. it's, it's a hard reality but yeah. it's very true it's true no i i, I couldn't agree more mm -hmm. I, I agree and you know i, I my hope for our sport is that we l look at how our athletes can continue to grow within the sport within the sport right and i think that's that's a topic that probably could we could have several podcasts on right like how do you how do you grow the sport like because mm -hmm. i think there's many different aspects to that but shoot part of growing the sport is not losing the and people that are in them. it yeah exactly yeah and and again like right like um at the end of the day, this is all sub subjective, right? Because every sport wants to be bigger, whether you're skating or whether you're football. Sure. Football has the same conversations regularly, right? Like right now, football has an issue. I mean, Thomas knows this a million times better than me, but they have an issue with head injuries. So guess what? Parents are, are nervous about letting their kids play the game. Well, no, I think you, you <clears throat> saw that specifically in football when the movie Concussion came out. Yeah. And there was a lot of misinformation about concussions. There was a lot of misinformation about the relationship to CTE playing football. You know, since then, there have actually been legitimate studies that have shown otherwise. Yeah. Right. And that there's plenty of other sports that are much more, you're much more susceptible to concussions. But again, it comes back to that perception. Right. And it comes down to this idea that like in the skate world, like, everybody's so sensitive always about growing the sport, but every sport's sensitive about growing the sport. Mm -hmm. It's important for any sport to grow. And it's very important that if you are a skater, that when you're communicating with other people who aren't skating, is that you focus on the things that you love. It's not a hard concept, but again, we go back to misinformation. And one testament about skating, which is a good and a bad, 
is that when you fall in love with skating, you never leave. It's insane. I mean, it's really we're hard. joking about me being yeah. old, but like you guys know how old some of the people are in the sport, right? <laughs> yeah. So when you fall in skating, you never leave. Mm -hmm. And guess what happens to people when they get old? They get grumpy. <laughs> and guess what old grumpy people do? <laughs> they complain. They complain. <laughs> and then all these new people are coming in that fell in love with the activity, right? Like I really fell in love with the activity. It doesn't matter if, if there was only one skater left and I was the only one. I love the activity. Yeah. I don't care. I'm going to do it for right. the rest of my dang life until I can't skate anymore. But it's important if you are conscious about wanting the sport to grow, focus on the things that you love about it, right? We really see that in the community where like, a lot of us who've been in it too long, we're like, this is the problem yeah, with this. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of theories about why it's not growing or why we're losing skaters. So, I mean, again, you know, telling people, um, but also like, I think there's a, uh, like a skating rink problem of taking those kids, you know, that are at session and like taking them and putting them into the speed class. There's no grassroots program to actually put together and get these kids to actually skate speed class, you know, build them up from the ground. And back when I started, that's how I got into skating. There was a speed class, it was fun, there's a ton of people doing it, and they did an awesome job at recruiting from sessions. And I don't see that anymore. Well, here's the, and, and again, like it, so often we want to solve 5,000 foot level mm -hmm. problems, right? We're like, okay, here's the problem with skating. We got this happened and this happened and this happened. And listen, if you love it and you wanna see it grow, do something small, do your part. Get one person to skate, yep. get your buddy. Like, dude, I love this, man. Like, Thomas, like, that's how we became friends. Brandon, <laughs> yeah. that's how we became <laughs> friends. And we've been friends forever, right, through this this commonality. And, and, and so, like, let's not go, like, we got to solve these major problems or it's doom and gloom. Do one small dang thing. Just do your part. Like, I feel like we're doing our part with NSC. And, and obviously like we have the budget and we, and we have the capabilities to do a lot more than other people, but that doesn't mean if you can't do what we're doing, that you can't do something. Yeah, you can't do mm -hmm. anything. Right. Well, right, just, I, I, just to kind of go <clears throat> back on what, what you were saying about in, in skating, right? You have the, the, the people that never leave. And then you have the people that start, you got to get them to that never leave state. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to do if you're a person that's never going to leave, but you're complaining about everything. Yeah. Right. If, if you're new to something, and you respect someone that has been doing it for a long time, you're gonna take what they say. And they're just complaining. Yeah. Right, and, and you're yeah. gonna kind of hear every word they're telling you, and if every word they're telling you isn't real positive, it doesn't give them a lot of incentive to stick around. Yeah, and it's, it's crazy because it's so simplistic, right? Like when you talk to, 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 to older guys and you're like, like, why are you still doing this? It's, like, it's pretty simple, it's, it's fun. fun. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Right? It's like, super fun, yeah. It's fun, right? Like. <laughs> Why do you, why do you, what do you need more than that? It's fun. Like let's, in it's most basic thing. Mm -hmm. Like, are you smiling while you're doing it? Sometimes. You should, yeah. Is it really fun? <laughs> you should keep doing it. Yeah. Sometimes it hurts. <laughs> well, yeah. Well that, that, that part yeah. is the, the part that everybody loves. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you gotta, you gotta endure the suck a little bit yeah. sometimes, but, but no, I think that that's uh, definitely a major way to, to, to keep things positive and, and keep things going. Yeah. Well, there's certainly a lot of exciting things going on, right? We've got NSC 33. We've got, you know, the new wheels coming out. Um, I, I feel like we're, we're finally at a level where, uh, again, the, the, the product's starting to speak for itself. And you, you, you just have some big things going on when people can trust the product. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, um, along with the wheels, we also, uh, shameless plug, sorry, I got to do it. So we do. Um, we also have a unique wheel bag um and and <laughs> this just came from like pure necessity right like we skate and then like we're like oh let's solve a problem because like well yeah because like, like like with this problem right the wheel bag problem is like all right yeah you, you, you're using the set of wheels you change them out for outdoor you throw them in your bag mm -hmm. you put your wheels back on and all of a sudden your wheels feel all crazy because you can't remember which wheel was where yeah right so i thought i thought we were the only ones that had this problem so yeah, when, so I, when I went over to Florida, it's like people have this problem where you mix well, here, wheels and it's. I don't know if you can see this on camera. I, I don't even know if you've seen this yet, Thomas, because we've been working on this. So, oh, yeah. So most of the wheel bags are this cylinder tube and they're, they're great. You can carry them around. stuff. So, but the problem is, is that um, and, and everyone who skates indoors and outdoors knows this. When your wheels get out of order, I don't know why, but they just feel weird. Yeah. Right. Like to me, it's like mixing like. 
you had two like bald tires up front in your car <laughs> and you just start mixing them around and you go into a corner it's like this doesn't feel right right yeah so we did this really simple bag and uh, this is this is just the the prototype. The the production one looks uh, a lot better. Um, at the top, it'll say left toe and right toe, and then it's simple. You just keep your wheels in order. That way, when you're going from indoor to outdoor, your wheels always stay in the same order. And if you're somebody who really likes to get all the value out of your wheels and you like to rotate them or flip them, this will allow you to track that. Um, and then in addition to that, of course, you know we got the the carabiner clip, so uh, super just throw easy. Throw it on your to, skate bag, yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll open this up just in case the camera couldn't see it, but. Like like, you know, it's just a really flat bag. It's super simple. Nice little rubber thing here. Uh, place for bearings and tools. Um, easy to pack. So um, we're really excited about these. And and they're going to last a long time. So, you you know, you get maybe uh, two of these bags, one for indoor, one for outdoor, and you probably won't have to buy another one for years. So pretty yeah, dang cool. Yeah, you'll definitely That's be sturdy, able to sure. run, run, run its course, man. You'll get through several sets of wheels before that bag right. starts to show any wear and tear. I know that. Yeah, and so um, – but yeah, I mean, we touched on on so many things. Um, don't want to make the the podcast too long, but was there anything that uh, that was important for you guys to kind of, you know, there's so many things happening in skating right now, especially with it being the beginning of year mm -hmm. and it's been silent for a little while. Wheels have been weird. We kind of been, you know, well, stepping yeah, yeah. Wheels, a, wheels was definitely the the thing that. Well, yeah, you got to tread lightly, man. Yeah. It's like, hey, someone find out you got wheels, man. <laughs> it, it might be a mob mentality. <laughs> they man, might I'm be gone. You. Still got those wheels, man. Everybody looking, man. <laughs> but no, man, it's been it's been awesome, guys. I think uh, you know this this should be a regular thing. I think there's a lot of cool things happening in the sport, and and I think any avenue we can we can have to talk about the sport and and put our sport in a positive light is a good one. It's awesome, man. Yeah, awesome. Well, we'll we'll wrap it up here, and and uh, you know we just kind of do this sporadically so like uh you know look look for the the next one after this we don't know when we'll release it but whenever there's a need we'll we'll try to jump on it so yep there if there's drama in the sport man we want to <laughs> we want to help <laughs> comment below comment below <laughs> man, <laughs> like get, awesome. get, get on there and, and, and state your opinion because i know there's a lot out there and the best part about opinions is none of them are right none of them are wrong <laughs> yeah right in a lot of ways True. man Love it. So, all right, guys. All right, we'll, guys. We'll see you ne the next time we get on NSC Podcast. Cool. Later.